friends today i am going to share with you some important aspect of education system that is prevailing in finland and also a few points which we have taken for indian education in done through the nep 2020 now when we look at the, the education system in uh, in finland or education system of finland uh, definitely it is considered to be one of the best in the world the reason behind this is that finland's education system is a child centered education it is not favoring the people who run in the school it is favoring the people especially the pupil who are in the schools finland provides a very holistic education system the environment of uh, the Finnish education system is very, very holistic. You know, we, we say in India, the overall development of the child and integrated education, etc., which is already happening in, uh, in Finland. Uh, so, Finland's education, in fact, taking into consideration of uh, the 21st, 21st century education, 21st century skills in the uh, classroom. Now, what are these 21st century skills in the classroom? All of us are aware, at least uh, 10 points we can say. First one is, um, scientific temper is created in and through education. So education helps students to have a scientific temper. It also helps the students to be uh, to, to cultivate collaboration, collaboration with the teachers, with the companions, with the friends, with the school, with the society etc collaboration is a very very important aspect in 21st century 21st century also talks about digital literacy you know digital literacy is very important today we are talking about artificial intelligence and so on digital literacy is so important today and Finnish education or education in Finland uh, is concentrating on this aspect I think the, the fourth element of uh, 21st century skill is problem solving. Today, in every walk of life, we face problems. We are living in the language of in the language of Arunthiti Roy. We are living in a in a world of uncertainties. The only thing that is certain is uncertainty. There are problems plenty faced by children. Pl plenty of problems faced by all of us, and therefore. In the childhood days itself, we must teach the children to face the problem with problem-solving skills. Communication. Communication is so important in 21st century. Most of the problems we face today is because of lack of communication or absence of proper communication. And therefore, communication must be an area where we need to concentrate. Critical thinking is very, very important. We need to create uh, a kind of atmosphere of creativity, innovativeness in our schools. Health and fitness is very, very important. Not only we are teaching intellectually, we need to teach children physically also. We must concentrate on social responsibility. As individuals, we are all living in a society. And in the society, we have responsibility to one another, in the family, in the outside, in our institutions, etc. Therefore, social responsibility is a big thing to teach our children. Finally, we need to teach ethics, values, discipline, positive thinking. So these 21st century skills all are seen in the Finnish education. This is a very great thing for us to notice. And I see a lot of positive elements in our education system, which is proposed by the NEP 2020. NEP 2020 talks about uh, respecting uh, diversity and local culture, local context, equity and inclusion, community participation, digital uh, literacy, or we call it use of technology, emphasis on conceptual understanding and rather than mark oriented uh, rote learning we need to specially concentrate on the unique capabilities of each individual 
critical thinking and creativity and continuous review etc review means total assessment system has to change all these things are proposed by the NEP now when as I said when we look at the system in Finland and when we look at the NEP we see some some aspect of Finnish education has come into the new education policy at least in principle now remember one of the things all of us must understand is that education is not about degrees alone earning degree or having some bookish knowledge that is not education education means inculcating values self-discipline positive thinking the attitude of helping the attitude of giving to the society etc i think finnish education is focusing on all these elements for uh, their students that is why it is one of the exceptionally good education finnish students can give justice to what real education is and uh, that is why they talk about multidisciplinary education etc and I, as i said this aspect also this multiple disciplinary educational aspect from finnish education also we can see in the new education policy 2020 especially in the higher level now, when we look at Indian education as a general, I am not talking about NEP at all, uh, NEP uh, or after NEP, when we look at the Indian system what we see is uh, teachers are not very qualified, they lack commitment, the school lacks um, uh, basic facilities, there is no introduction of this 21st century skills and technology and so on. And therefore, we are still lagging behind. So when we look at Finnish education, education is the key to evolve and adapt in a changing world that is communicated to the students. And students know that in and through education only they can change the world or adapting to the changing world. Education helps us to meet the requirements of future jobs and improves our standard of living while mitigating the problems which we are faced with, including climate change. The system in one country cannot be copied, I agree. Finland, Finnish education system cannot be totally copied and put it into Indian system. No, we cannot do that. But we can always look at the good practices. And good practices can be adopted. And um, uh, we can learn a lot. Finnish education has great strength and a proven record in education which can be shared uh, in our context. For example, uh, Finnish education system has a, a lot of history, okay? We have seen these changes happening uh, over the decades, many, many decades, almost a century, all education. The development of the whole education system takes time. For example, look at, uh, we, we also had an Indian education system we had in 1950s Dr. Radha Krishnan Commission suggestions for Indian education. We have Kothari, sorry, we had the Mudaliyar Commission. We had in 65, 64, 65 Kothari Commission. Then we had in 68 the first education policy, 86 another policy, 72 we had the, uh, no, so in 1976 we had 42nd Amendment of Indian Constitution to incorporate education as, uh, as uh, uh, what we call uh, both states and centrals responsibility so uh, it, it comes it brought education into concurrent list so changes takes time and uh, if you look at uh, Finland's education also started in 1921 you know it's almost one century over we are already in 2022 1921 compulsory school attendance was introduced in Finland and in 1943, law on free of charge school, etc., the midday meal, and what we call today, has been introduced there. The students have been served free school lunch during each school day since 1948. It is very important to note. That's why they are, they are, everybody gets education. The students do not feel malnutrition because the schools provide food as part of the education system. And 1972, they say, the school reform has happened. 
new comprehensive school system with nine grades guarantee same opportunities for good quality education for uh, which is nearest to your your uh, village uh, so the everywhere schools have been established in 1972 1973 act on ch children's day care day care local authorities are obliged to organize public day care which allows both parents to participate in working life so the government took that kind of initiative. In 1985, there was a shift from a unified curriculum to a national core curriculum with local adaptations. We have seen the reforms in 1994, 2004, 2014. The national core curriculum and the education system have been reformed several times in all these years. That is, 94, 2004 and 2014. We have seen in uh, uh, 2015, for example, pre-primary education compulsory for all six years old. The compulsory education, what we call today. 2018, reform of secondary vocational education to introduce competency-based qualifications and a close cooperation with workplaces. That means uh, vocational training also made compulsory for students. In 2021, extension in compulsory education, the minimum school leaving age raised from 16 to 18 years. So a lot of changes have happened in Finland. Now we have the Finnish education system, we can learn a lot about the structure as we in the NEP suggested some changes. For example, 10 plus 2 is changed to 5 plus 3 plus plus. 3 plus 4 system. Similarly, several changes have happened from basic education to secondary education to tertiary education and doctoral studies, etc. in Finland. Now, my point is, what are the characteristics of Finnish education when we talk about uh, Finnish education? What are the characteristics? First one is, schools are given great deal of autonomy. I think uh, this is a very good thing. Uh, in Indian education, the governments, of, governments in India, uh, central government and the state government must follow this. Schools are given great deal of autonomy. Of course, the national core curriculum has been decentralized. Uh, there is a high level of trust between the states and the center or the regional or local schools authorities with the national authorities, etc. I think it is a very important point India can adopt this one because we are in a federal system and it was and I hope this will continue. Teachers are professional uh, uh, professionals of learning because teaching job is very highly regarded. They can uh, for example decide how they teach and what are the learning materials and resources they use etc. There is a, a freedom for teachers to use their teaching method and, and and there is a lot of freedom for the teachers to decide what helps the students. All children are entitled to, to special support. Pupils with minor or medium learning difficulties study in the same schools. What we call today in our context is called inclusive education. You know, the educational policy 2020, national education policy 2020 it talks about the equity and inclusion. Inclusion means there is no discrimination between students. Everybody should be part of the same system. Finnish children therefore begin pre-primary education at the age of six, spend less time in the classroom and have less homework than kids in many other countries, but still have excellent learning outcomes. This is a very important point for us to notice. Now, another thing we can uh, notice uh, about uh, Finland education is about teachers, you know. Teachers are highly valued as I already mentioned. Teaching is a popular profession. The university can select the most motivated and talented applicants. In fact, uh, the best students all get into teaching profession in Finland. I hope one day will come in India too that we get the best students as teachers. Both class teachers and subject teachers are highly uh, tra trained, highly talented and the research based training includes 
pedagogical studies and teaching practices. In Jesuit schools, we talk about Ignatian pedagogy or IPP, integral pedagogical programs, etc. IPP. Similarly, in Finland, there is a research based training uh, includes pedagogical studies and teaching practices. Uh, therefore, what happens to the teachers? Teachers become autonomous professionals with the expertise and ability to develop their own work. They are trusted enjoy wide autonomy and have flexibility in their works. Teachers also actively participate in developing edu education and education solutions and learning materials. As I said, this is a very good thing we need to take. And I, I agree that NEP 2020 has some uh, important support or proposals for our teachers. They are teacher empowerment, qualification of the teachers, TET exam is compulsory, NPST is a must, 50 hours of continuous professional development is a must for teachers, and teachers must have basic minimum qualification as for beard, etc. So, in Finland, all these things have already taken place. Now, education in Finland is not for simply in the school age or college age. It's a lifelong learning, lifelong learning. It's very important for us to notice. And in education, every aspect of Finnish education is concentrating on uh, uh, creativity and problem solving. At the end of the 20th century, Finland's economy started focusing on technology industries, info information, technology, etc. And uh, New partnerships developed between tertiary education and industry, while primary and secondary education also evolved to promote creativity, problem solving, teamwork, and other working life skills. The national core curricula of 2014 for basic education and 2021 for general upper primary, upper secondary education emphasized several trans, transversal competencies and phenomenon based learning. Uh, it is very important to note how they are catching up with the time. Education technology is a very very big uh, industry in, in, in Finland. We have seen in the recent years a thriving education technology which we call uh, Ed tech education technology is called ed tech sector has developed. There are a lot of software companies on educational matters. Finland has a strong digital sector. I think um, India also is definitely because NEP talks about uh, one of the key principles of national education policy 2020 is that uh, technology based education, digital education, in other words. I think we, we are also taking this aspect seriously these days. In 2000 itself, Finland's education system began to be noticed by all. And worldwide attention and recognition started pouring in. In the la latest uh, world PISA rankings, that is called PISA rankings, Finland has stood out for success in combining excellent academic results with a high level of student satisfaction. Well-being is the key consideration in Finnish education. I think uh, this aspect is seriously taken by uh, education in New Delhi, government of Delhi, Delhi government has taken. For example, you remember that a few years ago, then Education Minister and Deputy Chief Minister of New Delhi, Manish Sisodia started happiness curriculum in our education in New Delhi. I had gone through that books when I was in Delhi. They are very, very uh, well prepared and high standard. So Finnish education has this aspect. And when we look at uh, this during this pandemic, every 
education uh, systems in many of the world, many countries eh, have been collapsed during the pandemic. But COVID-19 demonstrated uh, the, uh, the resilience and versatility of Finnish education system. In the spring itself, in 2020, Finland closed almost all the schools for two months and began distance learning with minimal interruption. We, we also went into online classes, etc. But you know, there is a huge digital divide in India. Majority of the section of people, pupils in India, do not have access to this digital world. All Finnish school went on online education and they, they, they succeeded it. Only two months they found it difficult. Now we, uh, Indian educators and Indian government, can take a few aspects from uh, Finnish education model to Indian education system. I say the first one is continuous development. The, the reforming of the education system in Finland continues even today. They are not a finished product. Every time they change, what on, based on the based on the research res, uh, results, etc., they have changed education. And we can take up this continuous development uh, aspect of teachers. I saw, as I say, already the NEP 2020 positively has come out with this aspect. Second aspect is the multidisciplinary aspect which also has come into our education policy. And uh, one of the things I noticed in Finland, in my readings I understand that uh, Finland's education is always uh, uh, looking at outside of the classroom, not only classroom based education. For example, students um, often combine educational content with a leisure travel, while education professionals learn about the Finnish education system, including the curriculum, management, pupil centered learning, and more. There are uh, several other things we can take up, especially in the, in the higher education system, etc which uh, I am not going to deal with uh, you today. We will have another session on Finnish higher education. But remember, Finland's education can be a good model for us. And if our governments, if our educationists, the writers, thinkers, teachers, etc., if they understand the positive elements of Finnish education, we can definitely adapt to the good things from there for us and uh, uh, we can also enhance our education system. There are a lot of things to learn from Finnish education. That is my experience. And I, I like the way they consider education. And the importance they are given to education is um, uh, we cannot compare with any other country. Their teachers are highly respected, honored, dignified and respected. I hope one day our teachers also will become like them. Thank you very much and God bless all of you. Thank you.